I'm gonna go out and say this like in the middle of the video. For me, this is the deal breaker. I would not buy the Polestar 4 with this software. It is so cold outside and that's why this winter I want to go to somewhere warm like California to do warm weather testing of the Polestar 4, the Polestar 3, Volvo EX90, Audi A6 e-tron and other new electric cars that are coming this winter. I'm going to do my cold weather testing here in Norway but I want to travel somewhere warmer so we can get the results of summer weather, warm weather at the same time. So you guys don't have to wait until next summer until I have these press cars in Norway if you are on the fence and wondering which one you want to buy. But a trip like this is going to cost me a lot of money. I'm trying to get about half of it from the sponsors, but the other half I'm going to have to finance myself or get help from you. And that's why I've started a GoFundMe and after a few weeks we've already raised like 20% of our goal, which is completely bonkers insane. So if you want to support this trip, there will be a link down below to the GoFundMe. All contributions, small or big, help immensely. So guys, thanks a lot so far, and let's see if we can get to 100%. Today, we're gonna find out how far the new Polestar 4 long-range dual motor performance can go on a full charge of battery, now that the temperatures are getting lower and winter is approaching. But maybe more importantly, we're gonna find out if the advanced driver assistance systems have improved with this latest software update. Polestar promised that this update has fixed the issues I had with the car I had on loan a few months back. For me, that car was almost undrivable and actually dangerous when using adaptive cruise or pilot assist. So let's find out if Polestar have fixed these issues. The short answer is no, but it has become a lot better. But before we jump into the negatives, I don't want to start this video out on a negative tangent. Let's talk about some positives because there are a lot of things to love about the Polestar 4. So this being the long range dual motor performance on these 22 inch wheels, maybe not the best wheels for getting the most range and we'll see that later on in the video. It looks spectacular in this exterior color and in this spec. The tailor knit interior also really nice, though I would prefer leather. And guys, you saw it binging at me, it making sounds and yeah, just nagging at me. I'm looking at the road, but I'm also talking to you. Yeah, so this is a really nice car and it is practical, it's spacious, it's super comfortable. Even on these 22 inch wheels with the adaptive dampers, it rides almost like an S-Class. And even on these big wheels, it is so quiet going 120 kilometers an hour. I don't have to raise my voice. The reason I'm raising my voice is because I'm a little bit frustrated because I really like this car, but yeah, okay, let's get into it. The adaptive driver assistance systems, when I first drove this car two months ago, were terrible, complete disaster. I was so annoyed with the car. I was lucky to get to report the issues directly to the Addis team at Polestar, like face to face. And I voiced my frustration, but it, it's not, it's far from perfect and it's far from finished. Yes, it is better. So the main issues with it before was, for example, passing a truck. So going in the left lane, going at faster speed than the trucks in the right lane, the car would just phantom brake jump on the brakes and it would be dangerous. It doesn't do that anymore, though sometimes, there's a truck here, let's see, it gets a little bit nervous. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't think I want to pass this truck, so I'm just gonna slow down a little bit. Maybe like a kilometer an hour or two or three or four or five, but now it's fine. It's not phantom braking with this truck in the right lane. Another thing also, when switching in between driving on the throttle, and adaptive cruise control, pressing the button, especially in one pedal drive, there was such a big delay. Yes, I am like, the car keeps nagging at me. I, I'm, I'm looking at the road, but I'm talking to you and talking with my hands. It's so frustrating, like every two, three minutes, if I'm looking at the screen here, if I'm looking out of the window, if I'm looking at the mirror, if I'm looking at the freaking driver display, it keeps nagging on me. It's like, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. 
the delay between going off the throttle and engaging the adaptive cruise control is a lot less than it was before, but there's still a delay. There's still a delay. So if you drive this car very calmly and easy, you can live with it. But if you're an active driver like me, it's just frustrating. Changing lanes, also adaptive cruise control with pilot assist. You have to wait for the car. And still when you wait for the car, it's like it, it releases the, the steering. And sometimes you can feel it just tug on the brakes. It doesn't matter what you do in this car. When you're driving on the adaptive assistance systems, it seems like all the systems are working against each other. It's a constant struggle. Before the car felt on edge and just completely confused. It doesn't feel that way anymore. It just feels nervous. And I don't know if that's a better feeling. It may be, but it's not a good feeling. Keen viewers may have seen that we actually started at a different starting point today, and that is because of our new sponsor, Rog de Charge, more on them later. So we're still driving the same route, but we're starting kind of in the middle, and then we're going south to where we started before, turning around, and then we're gonna go north to Moab now, and then back to where we started at Rog de Charge in Inlandsporten. So the route's gonna be the same. I think the average speed is pretty much gonna be the same. We have an extra like, loop like that or an extra turnaround but i don't think that's going to affect the time or the speed or the consumption at all and talking about consumption after about half an hour on the road our average consumption is at around 29 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which isn't great so yeah a few negative things about this car a few positive things but let's see once we get to muel if that consumption has dropped or not I was just sitting here and just admiring how quiet and comfortable this car is. The seats are comfortable, the road noise is kept to minimum, and the suspension is very comfortable, really nicely um, dampened. And I'm like, I haven't heard the car nagging at me for at least like three, four minutes. And then I look at the screen here where I'm gonna do my turn around here in uh, Muel, where we usually do our halfway point, but not because we start in the middle of the, of the route, we only have a quarter left to go. And when I'm thinking of that coming out of the tunnel, the car's like, you look like you're tired, you need a break. I mean, it is so frustrating. And I know all of these systems are supposed to be here for our safety. So you're not supposed to like, uh, you know, fiddle on your phone or fiddle on a screen here or be, be distracted but it's so sensitive in this car. I drive in this car the same way as I drive in every other car, and it's just so frustrating. I'm, I'm gonna go out and say this like in the middle of the video. For me, this is the deal breaker. I would not buy the Polestar 4 with this software. Yeah, I gave this car a chance the last time because it was just, just out and I probably had the world's first press car, but the car's been out for a few months now, and this just isn't good enough. It's so, so bad. But okay guys, we are now three quarter way through our range test on the average consumption has actually dropped, which is a positive thing. 26.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So let's get on the motorway again. And now it just, it doesn't want to engage the adaptive cruise control. Why, why not? Then there it does it. There's no, there's no message. It just, nothing happens. Oh. I fixed it guys, I fixed the Polestar 4, or I found a button that fixes the massive, massive nagging and annoyance I have with this car. So you go into the menu here, you go into assist, and then you can turn off driver alert. And then it doesn't nag about anything. You can look wherever you want, you can be on your phone if you want, but most, most importantly, you can just drive normally without the car every three minutes like nagging at you so the last half an hour has been pure pleasure it's been such a nice car i can finally enjoy the car for what it is adaptive cruise control no annoyances there of course as i said it's not perfect but now i think i can handle it so i take back that being a deal breaker because you could turn it off can you add it to your shortcuts on your main menu i don't know yet i don't know yet 
I'm gonna see in the week to come now, guys, if there are more things that annoy me. I just have to stop the timer with that in one hour and 41 minutes. So yeah, this route takes as long time as the other route, even though we're starting in the middle. But yeah, so I take it back. It's not a deal breaker anymore. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can really enjoy this car for the in the week to come and uh, for what it is, because it is, except for that, that's also a strange thing. When you go off, sometimes when you go off throttle and then it one pedal brakes in one pedal drive it's like it, like it like it slips and then engages the motor again that's very strange you saw that there that is very very weird so we're gonna go to the dog the chargers here we're gonna connect uh, and we're gonna see what kind of charging speed we get after passive heating after a few hours on the road okay so let's show you guys the actual consumption and the numbers so actually got a lot better look at that guys 26.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in the beginning of this test it didn't look very promising but i think that number isn't actually too bad so the polestar 4 has its charge port here on the driver's side on the rear three quarter and it is actually electronically operated unlike the polestar 2 or the polestar 3 and now we're going to connect to this charger so what we're going to do now we're going to choose start and then we're going to choose this one to the left there and then I'm gonna use my Irogida charge charging card. So there we go, it's now approved and then just very easily. And this is quite cool, like, look at this guys. The charger is called Chris, but not Chris with a K like me. So what's cool about these Irogida chargers is that all of them have different names. So here we have Chris, we have Björg, and then we have Papa and Mama over there. Let's check out all of these other ones when we're uh, waiting for the car to initialize Oscar. We have Anetta, and then Helena, and the last one is Oliver. So that's pretty cool. This one is called Mama. I charged that one at the beginning. And this one is called Papa, Mom and Dad in Norwegian. So that is pretty cool. I'm going to link uh, the Rogda charging map down below if you want to check out where your closest Rogda charger is. So we're connected here at 33 percent state of charge and then let's choose this one to get more information so this is pretty cool very very nice screen here and if i use my payment card it will show me the actual uh, amount we would be uh, charged at this moment in time but we're getting 213 215 amps 410 volts 88.15 kilowatts that is i mean it is what it is it's not it's cold outside, so getting 90 kilowatts is expected, though that is actually pretty, pretty low. Um, this car does have active preconditioning. If we use the navigation system, we don't do that in this test, because in this test, we're all about getting the maximum range. So we don't want to precondition the battery and use energy that way. But I do test the car's peak charging speed in another test called the long trip test, which is going to be the next video on this car. So this is very intentional, just passive eating to see what kind of charging speed you're gonna get after just driving the car for a few hours. If you forget to precondition, or maybe you don't even know about preconditioning. Now let's take a look at the results. So if we take the usable battery capacity of this Polestar 4, which is 94.0 kilowatt hours, we divide it by the consumption, 26.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then subtract 3% for heat and discharging losses. That gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions of 345 kilometers. And actually, that is actually pretty decent considering the size of this car, the performance, and also considering that the WLTP rated range of this specific car on 22 inch performance wheels is 500 kilometers. We're actually during what could be called cold, almost winter conditions, depending on where you live. For me, <laughs> from Western Norway, this is pretty much winter. But here in Eastern Norway, it gets a lot colder. But considering the conditions, the wet and damp roads and also the cold temperatures, we're at 69% of the claimed WLTP rated range. And if we compare that to other electric cars we usually test in winter, that is actually pretty decent. So I think this car getting close to 350 kilometers of real world range when it's between three and six degrees Celsius is actually pretty decent. I don't think that is bad 
at all. When I did the summer test of this car or warm weather testing earlier this year, about two months ago, it was with the rear wheel drive version on 20 inch wheels and that car got 422 kilometers. So we don't have a reference point for the dual motor performance version on 22 inch wheels. So I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that is actually, actually pretty decent. And also I was finally able to find out how to get rid of that annoying, or those annoying messages, the car nagging. And I have to say, after that, the car was a pleasure to drive. So I'm actually looking forward to spending an, a week with this car. I was looking forward to that just an hour ago, but now because the car is, is not annoying to use, I think I can actually enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to my week with this, the Polestar 4. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.